I, yeah. I personally loved Fabio Contra. Like I thought he yeah. was, he was especially awesome. in his, his heyday at Real Madrid. Like he was a great defender and he had the ability to play defensive mid. I think that's sometimes forgotten. Like his first few matches for Real Madrid, he started as a left defensive midfielder and actually did really well. Um, and I just, he was a great player, really serviceable player for those few years when he was kind of committed professional and at his peak, he was, he was, he, I mean, he kept Marcelo out of the team. So that says it all. He, I loved Contra. Contra was amazing. I, I, you know, it, I can't, he's, he is literally one of my favorite players from the last 20 years or so. And Partly because it, you know he was awesome. He was an awesome two-way wing back, and I mean, it's part of the his the offensive side of things. We always labeled him as a guy who was like he's the defense guy, Marcel's the offense guy. But I think it's also partly because of the way Mourinho used him. But and and a little bit Ancelotti as well, obviously. But when you watch Contra with Portugal, attacking wise, he was a phenom. Like he. He was incredible offensively. It was mostly at Real Madrid where he had the the moniker of a of a defensive left back. But you know he also gave us good offensive moments. Even um, in today's game, where where the fullbacks are oftentimes now inverted or playing in those central positions, he would have been perfect for that. I mean he's he's got the motor and the ability to be just inc- probably one of the best one v one up there. With I mean Mendy's now kind of taking that ma- mantle, but. I'll never forget the game he played against Aaron Robin at the Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, like unbelievable one v one game defensively, um, and, and also had the just, assist. He was up there, yeah, and also had the assist. And I, I loved, I loved him because I was in college in the time when he was, um, he was when he joined, and I was playing left back, and so like I kind of modeled my game off of him. So I, I really liked Contra. Uh, I also just loved him apart from the the ability. I just loved him. I don't know why, but there was something about him that I just I wish like one I wish I could have partied with him one night and I wish I could have just <laughs> like shared a bench in the locker room with him. I, I feel like he'd just be a fun guy to have around. Obviously he has his he has his own moments, like the famous the famous scene where he's on the bench even though he's not supposed to be and Casillas is like, Hey, you're not even in the squad or something like that. He goes <laughs> yeah. back and or I can't remember the context. Was it even he was like actually that getting was right. to, Yeah, he wasn't. Like that? He wasn't supposed. To be, he wasn't in the squad, and yet he came down on the bench. And like he was like, "Hey, you need your, you need all your stuff." He also was. I mean, there's a lot of what ifs with his career. If injuries didn't just break him down, would he? I mean, he's still pretty young, right? And uh, I feel like his career was cut shorter because of that, that, and I don't know how much he actually took care of himself. He was a smoker, but he also was just badass. He was a good trash talker. He would always show up in Classico and throw some bodies around. He was a good, kind of like a Pepe in the sense that you'd go to war with him. I always liked that about him. You know what he's doing now? No. You seen what he's me. doing now? No. He's in his native Portugal in his hometown, and he's a fisherman. I did know that. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. Good for him, man. You don't, yeah, you just know he's awesome. living his best life right now. He's happy. Yeah. I feel like he's happy. He doesn't care. Yeah. He yeah. just does what he wants to do. Yeah. Uh, I just will mention about Gago. I was really hurt by him not working out because I just... And this goes back to, you know, I was younger and we all were. But <laughs> when we signed Gago, you know, it was at a time where I actually was watching a bit of Argentinian football because in Canada we had it on Fox Sports. It was actually, you know, we didn't have every league available to us, but we had the Argentinian league. So I actually got a chance to see him with Boca. And I loved him. And I was like, this guy's the next Redondo. And, you know, we were just watching highlight comps of him because they were available. I don't know, at, at that time, if you remember this, but there was an app called Kaza. Oh, not Kaza. Kaza, Kaza yeah. Kaza and LimeWire. That was like our YouTube where we would just download videos, right? And uh, we tons would, of viruses. Yeah, <laughs> viruses and, yeah, a lot of just basically death to the computer and the PC. But there were a lot of gaggle compilations that I would just download and watch. And I was so, so excited for a signing. And I was just always hurt that it never worked out with him. He wasn't as good as we. His tackling, he was a great tackler. And uh, the passing wasn't as advertised, though, and the control. But I think, uh, I think it could have worked for him, but I just think... 
he was put in a midfield of Guti, Wesley Schneider, and him. Like he had literally no protection, and he's not a single pivot. Like he's more of a like a Pirlo single pivot, not a Casemiro single pivot. Like he's going to be a playmaker from deep, and so um, yeah, and he just didn't have the athleticism to be able to try and cover that ground. So he just got destroyed i mean you always mentioned the liverpool match i think that's all in our in our heads but that I was the double pivot Lassen, with last last and yeah gago just running around just non-stop and looking a step slow to every single challenge apparently he's... even the roma champions league final or not final but champions league knockout when we got knocked, knocked out by out. roma yeah apparently he's doing really good as a manager right now um yeah i saw that yeah for a racing club in, in Argentina, right? So, seems promising. He's only 35. He's a young, young coach. Uh, and his, part of his problem was all the injuries, too. He he was like Canales, where he did his knee multiple times. Yeah. Here's, yeah, speaking of players, I was disappointed with, like, Gago was one. Portillo was the other one, who was, like, so much promise. Shattered all of Raul's records in the youth league. Scored on his... Champions League debut, scored from 40 yards, helped us progress past Dortmund in the last second of the group stages with a goal, um, and then just was terrible. After I have that. a funny one for you. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I had, as a teenager, on my, like, I made my own. You know how you, like, you had, like, the computer PC in the family room or whatever, and I had, I created the background for our PC, and I like used paint and I had Esteban Granero, the future of Real Madrid's midfield as my, <laughs> as my background. It was like he was still in the youth academy and like hadn't even made his first team yet. But I was like hyping him up and <laughs> in the message boards. What's up, YouTube Maridistas? You might be wondering why the heck are we talking about Fabio Coentrao and why are we talking about Javier Portillo and Fernando Gago? And by the way, the full podcast talked about plenty of many more random people because the reason we're talking about these people is because it was pretty slow on Tuesday when we released the podcast. Um, usually there's something. There's some drama. There's some breaking news. There's a, maybe a transfer rumor. There's a game to talk about, or maybe there's an international break that's actually interesting. But, you know, the international break, the interesting talking points from the past week, we were kind of like far removed from them because it was already Tuesday. So we, we decided to do kind of combine the loan tracker with the free podcast and do a hybrid where we actually went through Real Madrid's history all the way back to 1950, and we discussed every single Real Madrid player on loan, and we formed an all-time 11, and then we talked about the subs of that team. So... Naturally, there's a lot of gems in there that we actually didn't even know about, and I'm sure you'll find interesting if you want the full episode is in the show notes. Um, there are so many good players in Real Madrid history that went out on loan, even legendary ones like Vicente del Bosque and Manuel Velasquez, Ignacio Zocco, the list goes on, Laurie Cunningham. So we put together an all-time Real Madrid Loney 11. The full podcast is in the show notes. Also, just wanted to let you know we got something really exciting coming up we got Chelsea back-to-back, and we're planning on being at the game in London and the game in Madrid, and we're also going to do Zoom podcasts for both of those after the game. If you want to be a part of that therapy session slash celebration slash whatever it's going to be, it is something you really don't want to miss on. It is the highlight of our podcast. It's basically everything amounts to these Zoom podcasts. Everything we do all year, it amounts to those moments. We want you a part of it. Go to patreon.com slash managing Madrid. We'll see you on the inside. It's totally worth the three bucks per month you're going to get because we give you a lot of value in return, and it's a big Real Madrid family. And also, we're coming to Chicago, we're coming to Mumbai, and we're coming to Toronto. If you want to book your spot, that is also on the show notes to those three places. Please come out. We'd love to meet you. And that's all I got for today. So I hope you enjoyed today's clip. We'll be back with a lot of content. And Hala Marid.